So as promised for my first episode of my podcast, whatever I decide to call this, we're going to do a Q&A. So I'm going to answer some of your commonly asked questions. Now, we've got quite a lot to go through, so I have no idea how long this video will be. Any shit ones will be ignored, so if I don't answer your question, it was a shit question, sorry. Also, if they don't make sense, that may be why I've not answered it. So first question says, how to get interested in you without being to fix first date? I don't know what the fuck that means, mate. Sorry, I, I don't know what you're trying to say. What's the best way to make money as an 18-year-old? So, good question. There are many, many ways that you can make money online these days. And there's many people way more qualified than I am to give you some advice because I didn't really start making money until now. But how do you make money as an 18 year old? You get a job, like literally get a job. Everyone seems to be trying to be a entrepreneur or a business owner. Some will make it, most will fail. And I'm not saying that to deter you from doing what you wanna do because you should absolutely try if you want to. But whilst you try your side hustle or whatever it is, get a job. I worked every shitty job under the sun, construction, factory job, restaurant, cafe. I worked most shit jobs. And it's the easiest way to get money because even if you do like 30 hours a week, that's like eight, 900 pounds. I remember it was, I used to work whilst I was at uni, whilst I was at college, sixth form, school. I got my first job when I was 15 years old. So yeah, that's the best way to make money. Rather than waiting months and months, hoping that something will make you money, just get a job. I know TikTok, for example, pays well, so you can just do one minute long videos. That might work for you. But whilst you are getting set up, just get a normal job, mate. There's nothing wrong with it. You will learn more skills from a normal job than you will do from TikTok and all these other side hustles to, to do that. And if my voice sounds weird, I'm ill right now. I'll try not to sniff too much. Next question is, I'm playing the field and I'm stuck between the two, two girls, I'm assuming that is. At what point do I cut one off? Well, whichever girl adds more value to your life, whichever girl you like more, that's the one you will naturally gravitate towards. I've been in this situation many times and it was always pretty clear which girl I would rather date. So there was usually one girl that I liked the most. I don't know if you can hear the rain right now, but that's fucking torrential. And my girlfriend's walking back from uni right now. Oh well. But yeah, there's, there's always gonna be one girl you gravitate towards. The easiest question to ask yourself is, does she add stress to your life or does she remove it? Whichever girl removes the most stress and adds the most value, go for her. Maybe that won't be the girl who you find the most attractive. That's for you to decide because if you're not looking for a girlfriend, then go for what's fun. I'm, yeah. How do I deal with stupid girls is the next question. Don't date them. They're a headache. What's your height and weight? Six foot one right now. I've not weighed myself in like three weeks, but I've slowly been getting weight. So I'd imagine around 81, 82 kilograms, kilograms, kilograms. I've recently finished a cut. I'm now on the move to a bulk. My brain's not fucking working. So I'm like still lean, but I filled out quite a lot. If I remember, I'll put some pictures in so you can see. A legend, bro. Keep going. Thank you. Thanks. How should men treat other, others, including women? Friend isn't nice to both. Uh, you should be nice and respectful when they deserve respect. Is marriage monogamy beta? Inherently, I suppose it is, it is beta, but in the wider spectrum or wider scope of things is it beta it depends on the person because i've seen very alpha men alpha men in relationships and and be monogamous but the point is that you choose to be a monogamous you choose to be in a marriage i don't think there's any issue with marriage when you are clued in and you choose the right woman the issue that guys have or men have is that they choose the wrong people to date and be monogamous with which is why they encounter the issues they do so for most men, yes, marriage and monogamy probably is beta because they're doing it, not because they want to, but because that's all they have. What I've learned is that, let me put this here, guys who don't have any game, their game is, is boyfriend game. They, rather than try to like seduce her and be like the, the alpha fuck boy, they'll be like, I'm such a good boyfriend, I'm such a good husband, I'll take care of you, I'll pay for things. So they don't really have any game. So they just try and sell themselves as this long-term provider. So that is beta. But you know, I don't live my life by what's beta and alpha. I live my life by not being a bitch. How would you recommend winning a girlfriend back? I would recommend not trying to win a girlfriend back. If she's left you, which I'm assuming she has, she's left you for a reason. Don't go back there. 
once a woman has lost respect for you, it's very, very hard to get this back. Guys don't understand this. They think that if she's cheated or if she's left him, you can work through things and communication, bullshit. If she's done these things, she's done it for a reason. Accept what the, your fate is. Move on. There's a lot of girls out there. And if it's happened, it's probably happened for a reason, mate. You know, take the sign, take it as a blessing and move on. Every time a relationship has not worked out for me, even though I've been the one to instigate that and end things, it's always worked out better. Every milestone in my life has been represented by a relationship ending, which was not intentional. But like when I first started TikTok, zero to 50K followers, it was after a relationship ended. 50K to 150K followers was another relationship ending and then so on and so on. But the right woman will actually uplift you and help you. My current girlfriend, she makes my life very easy. She does a lot of things for me in terms of like cooking, cleaning, doing things that I don't have time to do, doing things that I don't want to do. So because of her, I've made a lot of money. She works for me as well. I've made I've made tens of thousands of pounds because of her, which I, I could have done by myself, but she's made that process easier. And she does it with no complaints. And she doesn't even expect to be paid. I do pay for her. I buy her groceries. I take her off for food. She's never paid for anything. But yeah, she's a good girl. That's what a wife is. How to maintain a long-term relationship with a girlfriend who's sensitive? Ooh, good question. Uh, this is difficult because you need to I think work out is she sensitive because she's just that way inclined emotional or is it because she has an issue with you you'll find that when people become resentful of each other they are just generally more sensitive so with girls that I've dated I could tell they couldn't be awesome me I could tell that uh, they were kind of checking out the relationship so they became more sensitive to everything I said I'd make jokes they'd be sensitive I'd push her around tease her poke her like literally and they'd be sensitive so yeah maybe she is more emotional if that's the case then you have to kind of deal with it and tone down your sense of humor. I've got a very dark sense of humor. The way that I joke around with my girlfriend is quite dark and uh, ruthless, ruthless. But yeah, that's that's our sense of humor. If she wasn't sensitive, if she was sensitive, sorry, this wouldn't work. I've had girlfriends in the past who were too sensitive and would cry when I made jokes. That's not going to work for me. Didn't work for a reason. So yeah, that's why you date women who you're compatible with. So, for example, I'm not emotional at all, really. My emotions are neutral, happy or angry. I don't really feel sadness, not because I'm incapable, but because I almost don't allow myself to feel sadness. And that's not me trying to be some big fucking alpha male. It's more like I've, I've always been quite stoic, naturally. That's just the way I am. And I'm very optimistic. Three books to read and why. The Way of the Superior Man, number one. Hard Times Create Strong Men, number two. Number three. I'm looking at my bookshelf, if you can't see. Uh, maybe The Unplugged Alpha by Richard Cooper. Th this is a, a very good book. The Unplugged Alpha, if you can see that. It's basically like The Rational Male, but it's a shortened version, which is easier to consume. Because when you first get into this dating manosphere space, The Rational Male is amazing, and it has everything you need, but it's a bit of like a, whoa, what the fuck? It's a lot of information. 12 Rules for Life is a good book as well, but yeah, those are the three. Um, I'm not going to answer that one. Uh, da, da, da. How to deal with conflict in a relationship? Good question. Uh, it, it depends on why it's starting and who's starting it. Generally, you have to understand that she's emotional. She's very much in the moment. So whatever she's feeling right now, don't try and logic her out of those emotions. The worst thing you can do, and I'm bad for this, is going to a girlfriend and trying to reason with them and logic them and saying, you can't be upset or you shouldn't be upset because this, this, and this. Because this is the, because it, if they're upset, they're not going to see logic for what it is. Men are generally logical. When we have issues, we want solutions. When women are emotional or there's an issue, they want to be heard and listened to. So don't give her solutions. The best thing to do is to change her emotion. If I piss my girlfriend off, rather than sit there and, and plead with her, I'll play around with her. I'll take the piss out of her. I'll try and get her laughing because then when she, once she's out of the bad mood, and then I can come back to the conversation and be like, yeah, well, this is why this happened. And then you can have a conversation. But in the moment, yeah, don't try and logic her. Um, and depending, like, let's say she's crossed a big boundary, she's disrespected you, rather than verbally saying you've done this, this and this, I would just remove my attention. I would go cold because I'd rather my girlfriend come to me with, I'm sorry, I've done this, rather than me tell her what she's done wrong because 
uh, generally women have never had to take much accountability so when they have to they don't know how to so if you tell her what she's done wrong you've just kind of bypassed her having to realize what she's done wrong and in which case she will probably not learn so you're better off letting her learn herself or come to understand what she's done wrong so if my girlfriend came to me and was like Matthew I'm sorry I've upset you I've realized I've done this this and this I'd go yeah I forgive you because all I want is you to understand but if I go, you've done this, this, and this, she'll go, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry I've upset you. And they're just sorry for the emotion they've created, not what they've actually done. That's not going to help. How to cre create a vision for your future self. So this is an interesting question. So recently I've, or the last couple of days, I've been doing something called The Alchemy of Self by Sam Ovens. Google it. It's basically a PDF workbook where you create your own. It's like a vision board, mood board. Um, I might include screenshots of the one that I've created for myself. You read it morning and night. It's basically you, you you constantly reaffirm the person you want to become. So you write it in future tense. So the Matthew Hammond identity, you can't see this, but I might show you. It says millionaire, revolutionary, icon, respected, leader, titan, healthy, disciplined. And then I have pictures of my life and who I want to be. So I've got like Tommy Shelby because I I like his character. I've got a penthouse in my city. I've got Marbella. I've got an M4 competition in satin black because it's a sick car that I'd like. I've got a picture of some other role models. I have my legacy to date, so like what I've done so far, how much money I've made, the physique I've built, the car I drive, the followers I've built, and then my story and then what I want to achieve. And the idea is that you're, uh, you're basically committing psychological, I don't want to say that word actually, you're ending yourself psychologically. So you're, in order to reach the goal you have, you don't actually achieve a goal, you achieve a character and you will have goals watching this right now. And it's likely that the, go the goals you have, you can't achieve them because the character you have right now is not worthy of achieving that character. Like me five years ago, I could have never made 10,000 pounds per month because my character was not like, good enough. So you have to become a certain character before you can achieve certain goals. So the idea of this is you, re you really hone in on who you want to become and the person who could achieve those goals. And then you read this every day and then, and then you basically act in line with that, with the character that could achieve those goals, if, if that makes sense to you. So yeah, like Matthew wakes up at 8 a.m. every day, works till 10 p.m. and is in bed by 12 p.m. Matthew will stop at nothing to achieve his goals. Uh, I've written down how I dress, my haircut, my accessories. I've written down silver Rolex, a day date or a day just, 85 kilos lean, so, you know, you're, you're really going into depth and I've always been a big visualizer anyway, so this is pretty easy for me. But the idea is you you, you sit and visualize and sit on who you want to become. Because if I, if I tell you and my friends and my girlfriend, I'm not the kind of person who watches porn, I'm not the kind of person who does this, this and this, it's then painful for me to do those things because it's like I have the the angel on my shoulder saying, Matthew, what are you doing? You've told the world you don't do this. And if I go down to my affirmations at the bottom, I've written down, I'm not the kind of person who's addicted to dopamine. I'm not the kind of person who gets ill, even though I'm ill right now, but this is the first time this year, so we'll allow it. I'm the kind of person who is extremely confident. I'm the kind of person who will be very wealthy and successful. And this shit works because I remember when I was working my nine to five before I quit my job, I used to go for runs and I would zone out as I ran and I would picture the feeling of having 100,000 followers on TikTok. Although I've lost that account now, I've still achieved that. I would, I'd, I'd picture the feeling of having 10,000 pounds in my bank account because I'd never had that before, etc., etc. And you find that you you live your life in a way that would allow you to achieve those things. So there you go. Your mentors and why. I've just recently signed up with a business coach. So I'm not going to say who it is, but I'd say probably him at some point. Uh, I I wrote down Charlie Morgan as well, this YouTuber who I, I only came across him two days ago, but he's the guy who put me onto this alchemy of self. He's blown, blown my mind. So right now I would say him. I'd say Hamza to an extent because I learned a lot from him. And maybe God, because right now I'm, I'm reading the Bible as much as possible. I'm becoming as religious as possible because I think it's very important to have that spiritual aspect in your life because why wouldn't you? It's, it's just like it gives you another more leverage for everything. How to move on from somebody, time is the biggest healer. There is no one trick to or one thing that will help you get over them. Often it's just get on with your life, create more value, level up as a person, date more people. I'm not saying get under somebody to get over them, but just date more and then time maybe. Mate, yeah, time. Because time will uh, help you get over things. It's always time because there's, there was ex-girlfriends or a ex-girlfriend that I, um, I'll just say girls that I couldn't get over. And then you look back like two years later and you're like, why was I ever even bothered by that? So best bedroom advice you can give to a man with no experience, probably slow down. That's probably the best thing. Slow down, focus more on her, make it more about her. Uh, but also 
maybe not that actually. Um, you slow down is probably the best advice I can give you. Yeah, slow down. Go watch Sterling Cooper. He's he's a really good resource. I used to read Reddit guides when I was younger because I was a little nerd. I was like a 16, 17 year old guy, still a virgin, reading how to make a girl come because I thought, you know, I'm going to be a shagger. But yeah, uh, for the average person, how long self-development will it take before attracting a beautiful woman? This is like such a abstract, arbitrary question. You can't really put a a thing on that because or time scale because some people will be born taller, bigger, more attractive. So they will have a head start in life. When I was 18, I could attract like maybe a six or seven out of 10. Now it's like an eight or nine out of 10 if I was going to put a number on it. So yeah, uh, could I have achieved that level when I was, or that number or attractiveness of a woman when I was 18? Probably, but I was just not really confident. I had no game. So it really depends. It's pointless even asking that. Just do everything in your power to be the best version of yourself and the highest value version of yourself and then date and you will quickly see what options you have but even a guy who's not very attractive, he can still get a, a better than average looking woman. So yeah, that's the Instagram questions that I want to answer. Let's go to uh, the ones that I've written down from other people. So how to spot red flags. It's a good question. Uh, watch her. Stop listening to what she says. Watch her behavior. Women will often tell on themselves through their behavior. They, they, will, they will feed you bullshit via, via words because that's what they like. What I've observed is I could be the best boyfriend ever and do everything that she wants me to do. But if I don't tell her what my plans are, I, I don't say to her, we're going to live here, we're going to do this, I'm going to do this for you. It's not good enough. Women need the verbal fantasies where, as, as well as like the uh, the demonstration of whatever it is you're doing. So when a, when a woman's lying, she will just blow smoke up your ass and she will verbally lie and say bullshit. Whereas for men, we're more actions over words, I think. Like, if our if our mates do something for us, that means a lot to us. It does if they say something as well, but it's more actions. So, yeah, just watch her behavior and let her talk. They'll, they'll, they'll usually tell themselves. Because if she has a lot of red flags, you'll see it, mate. As long as you're not blind and kidding yourself, you'll see it. How to set boundaries. Uh, I go over this in my coaching. I say you set... Uh, there's, there's like insecure versus secure boundary setting. You want to be somebody who sets secure boundaries, which essentially you set the boundary, but you don't set it in an insecure way where you're like, if you don't do this, I will leave you. It's more of a, you set the boundary. You say, if you want to continue this behavior, do this, uh, this certain thing, then I can't respect that. I can't stick around. I'll see you casually if that's what you want, but I, I, I can't do, I can't date, take you seriously. That's what I've done. And boundary setting, people think it has to be this like, don't fucking do this. When really it's it's more of like a, a gentle reminder. You'll set more micro boundaries than big boundaries. <coughs> Especially early on, like with, with my girlfriend, the first few weeks, the first few weeks into us dating, I wasn't saying to her, if you fucking do this, I'm going to blah, blah, blah. It was more like me making jokes saying, oh, if you, if you want to be that kind of girl, I'll have to demote you to girlfriend number two. And I'm showing her that I have options. I don't really care. I'm not too invested. And, and that will gently guide her into acting right. And if it doesn't, then there's your answer, mate. She's not going to respect you enough to do it. Move on. If you set a boundary and she doesn't respect that boundary, you know she doesn't respect you as a person, not just a boundary. You can't negotiate with her. You can't try and force her to adhere to a boundary. Listen to what she tells you and how she behaves because that will give you an insight into how she'll behave later on in the relationship because if respect starts up here, it only ever goes down. It doesn't go up. I've never seen a woman gain more respect from a man. So, yeah... Uh you will set big boundaries occasionally, but only when they're needed. So let's say my girlfriend went on a night out, not that she does, and chatted to some guys. I would say, uh, I find that very disrespectful. If you do it again, I, I, I will leave. And I would just say it like that, and I would probably go cold for a few days, let it sink in. I don't, I don't fuck around with this stuff. So yeah, my mouth's dry as fuck. How to know if she's a good girl? Does she remove stress from your life? Does she voluntarily do things for you? This is a massive thing. Most guys have never experienced a woman who wants to do things for him. My girlfriend will just come in here and fill my water up, like my big fucking one litre water thing. She'll she'll come in here and say, are you ready for your sandwiches? Are you ready for some food? I've hoovered your bedroom for you. I've tidied up. She does many things that makes my life easier because she wants to do those things. Last night, I'm... I'm uh, doing some work she comes in she gives me a, a back massage like just little bullshit like that where she shows me I'm here I love you I care about you because 
when a woman is feminine, she will try and nurture you. That's what women do, like your mother. I'm sure if you had a mother in your life, which most of us have, they, they try to nurture you. They'll just like touch you and show you, I'm here, do you want anything? They'll rub your head, they'll rub your back. Your, your girlfriend, if she loves you, will do that as well. That's how you know she's a good girl. And that's the sort of woman that I will invest into. If I have to force her to do something, then you know the interest level isn't high enough because let's say you have a girlfriend and, and you have to kind of ask you have to ask her to do these things that you want her to do like taking care of you if you're reciprocating that value in return i.e being a masculine man who leads pays for things takes care of her shows her i can protect protect you provide for you and she's not doing those things and then yeah she probably won't do those things and she maybe doesn't respect you as much as what you think because there's always a guy that they would do those things for so yeah good to remind yourself of that if she's not doing it for me she'll do it for somebody else uh, what can I do to get more interest from girls long term and short term? Be attractive and don't be needy. Be in the best shape possible. Get regular haircuts. Have something about you. Be Have a purpose, a mission. This could be your career, your job. Even if you're working some shitty job you don't like, be the best person at that job ever. Even when I worked at Nissan and I hated my job. For those who don't know, I used to work in a car factory. So I worked in a what was called the press shop, so metal panels, like the door would come off before it's painted. You'd rub the, the, the door for defect, you'd slide it off, you'd slide it off. And although I hated that job, I was very proud. Whatever job I've done, I've always been proud. So I've always been like, I'm going to be the, the most efficient door rubber ever. When I worked in a, in a cafe, I, I'd make, I'd, I'd see if I could make three or four coffees at once, lattes. I'd be the fastest fucking latte maker you've seen because I got a buzz from knowing I'm good at this job, I'm the best. So yeah, whatever you're doing, you can derive confidence from that. And I, and I work with guys who, they were like 30 years old doing the same job as me at 18 years old. They still got girls because they were so confident and self-assured in what they did that it was attractive. You, you, don't, you don't have to be some six-figure earner to, to attract good women. Because most women, they don't expect that and then they know they're not going to get it. It's only these prestige uh, Insta model girls who want the, the six-figure earner. Most normal, nice girls. As long as you're a masculine man who leads and takes care of her and can fuck her properly, that will be enough for her. So yeah, uh, how did younger Matthew overcome talking like robots? Yeah, I was pretty shit socially because of my experience growing up. I didn't really mix that much and socialize that much. How do you get over it? Become a better communicator by doing it more often, becoming hyper aware of it. There's a really good YouTube channel called Charisma On Command that taught me a lot. I did bits of speech and voice coaching through uni. That helped a lot. Learning to speak through your diaphragm, learning to find your resonant voice. So there's a bit of a weird uh, exercise you can do where you basically bounce and hum and go, mm -hmm. you can find the the resonance, the resonance is like the vibration in your voice. When I speak, you should be able to hear the vibration coming through the microphone. So you can find that and it's basically how deep your voice can go. That will help. Speaking slower, using the correct tone of voice, all those things will, will help. Slowing down usually is the, the key to it, to becoming a better uh, communicator and also having a better vocabulary, becoming more articulate. Before I read a lot of books and before I consumed content, I wasn't the best talker. When you're 15 years old and you've not really lived much life or experienced much or consumed much, you're not going to be a better or a good communicator. Writing helps a lot. I did English through college and, and uni, so that helped. But practice, mate. Put yourself in uncomfortable situations where you are forced to be a better communicator. Dates are the best for this. Current workout split, I do push-pull legs up or lower by Jeff Nippard. His programs are really good. How do you lower your anxiety when you approach a girl or when you're on the date? Is it booze, ashwagandha? I, so firstly, I put myself in a situation or a frame where I know I have something to offer. So if I was to go on a date now, I offer so much value as a man that I would not be nervous about, would she like me? Will she find me interesting? Will I be boring? Because without sounding too arrogant, I know how much value I offer compared to the average man, even men 10 years older than me. I'm in really good shape. I'm decently looking. I earn good money. I, I can be very funny. I can be witty. I can communicate well. I've had a lot of experience, blah, blah, blah. So because I put myself in this position, why would I be nervous about speaking to a girl? I, I, I just wouldn't be. But when I was younger and didn't have as much experience, I would get myself hyped up. I would use affirmations. I put on my favorite music, like literally bounce around the house, sing, put on clothes that fit me well, look good. 
use affirmations like I'm a fucking sick cunt. If you if you like Ziz, you'll understand that reference. Say things like I'm I'm a sexy cunt. I'm so good looking. This is gonna be such a good date. Sounds a bit weird, but you know those girls who go I'm an independent bad bitch. This is exactly what they do, and it works. Uh, boost, yeah, um, uh, having some drinks does help a lot as well. Ashwagandha, never tried it before a date. I've only been taking it recently since I've had a relationship, so I don't know. But yeah, booze will definitely help. But don't don't rely on booze because you'll you'll become like the Indian guy from Big Bang Theory. It's a uh, it's a crux. You want to just work work through it and get over it. And most of these guys asking me these questions, they can hold a conversation with other men. They can talk fluently, confidently. It's only with women they struggle. And why is that? Because they've not had enough experience. My lips are dry, so bear with me, boys. If you gave the girl the ick a year ago, but now you're a different person a year later, self-improved and more experienced, will she still have the ick? She, uh, um, yes, she will do, but you, the difficult part will be demonstrating I'm a new person. So if she has the ick, she probably won't even give you the time of day. I'm assuming you want to get her on a date, you want to meet her. If she thinks you're a certain man, she probably just won't meet you anymore. So it would have to be organic, i.e. she would have to bump into you at the club. I've had this before where girls who thought I was like nerdy or dorky, not very confident, they've seen me on dates with other girls, they've seen me in the club and they've gone, fucking hell, you've changed, Matthew, wow, you're so confident, you're so this. And and then I've kind of played it down and then they've DM'd me on Instagram or whatever and I've gone, yeah, if you're lucky, I might give you a, a second chance after pieing me. And it's went from there, but you again, you can't really force these things. Women have to come to the, their own conclusions. You can't negotiate desire or force desire. She either fancies you, finds you attractive, or she doesn't. There's not really any middle ground. And if there is, you don't want to date those girls anyway because you're not going to get the best from them. How long has this been on for? 27 minutes. Okay. Is it worth learning how to dance? Uh, it's worth learning how to be confident dancing in a club. Now, I'm a shit dancer. I've been told this by everybody. As long as they don't tell me this, I don't really care. Like I, I can dance, but then I have friends who are cunts who will be like, Matthew, stop dancing like a robot. And then I become hyper aware of myself. So as long as you don't give a fuck, you'll be fine. But yeah, girls don't care if you're Chris Brown. They just care that you are having fun in a club. Often club game, and this is what I tell clients to do, is don't focus on the girls. Have a good time within your friendship group and your circle. You know, good vibes and all this bullshit. Girls will naturally gravitate towards you. They will look at you. They'll notice you. And when, and when they look at you and notice you, you then look at them. You smile. Let's say they keep looking at you. You you would then go over there and go, oh, you're going to look at me and not say anything. It's rude to look at a stranger and not speak to them. Whatever you want to say. But the important thing is to have them look at you first because you don't want to be the guy who taps a girl on the shoulder and goes, excuse me, excuse me, I think you're really attractive. Yeah, you'll come across weird, mate. Do you think the gains from taking finasteride and minoxidil will be lessened as the year goes by? I've heard that some guys have had to increase their dose as time goes on. I'm nearly two years in, well, like a year and a half. I've been taking 0.25, alternated with 0.5 milligrams every day. So like one day, 0.25, the next day, 0.5, the next day, 0.25, and so on. My hair's not thinned. It's just gotten very th thick and maintained that. I mean, it's greasy right now. But if you go on my Instagram highlights, you'll, you'll see how thin it used to be. Uh, so I don't know, mate. Reddit same seems to think so, but yeah, you'll find out. How much time do you spend with your girlfriend? Ideally, max two, three times a week. Right now, she's living with me because she has rats in her house. So that's not ideal, but what I make sure I do is when I spend time with my girlfriend, I sit in this office, so if she's in my house, she'll be in the living room doing whatever. I'll make sure I don't sit with her and do work, or I don't sit with her and scroll on my phone. I'll make sure I stay in this room and allow her to see I'm working because it's very attractive. The reason why most relationships die is because they create familiarity and the girlfriend just becomes resentful because they, think about the average relationship. He works a nine to five, she works, they come home and then all she sees of her partner is him sat scrolling on his phone, being a fucking loser or playing video games. It's not attractive. Even if you're at work for 10 hours a day working hard, she doesn't see that. She doesn't see how much your colleagues respect you. So all she sees is this fucking loser. Don't allow her to see that. Either don't allow her to see you doing those things at all or allow her to see you working. So my girlfriend knows I work in this room, even if I'm sat scrolling on my phone in this room, which I don't really do. But like, let's say I'm just being a fucking a Jeffrey and scrolling on my phone. I'll do it in this room so she can't see me because I don't want her to have that impression of me. And then when I do spend time with her, I'll try and give her quality time. So that would be two, three times a week. That would be a date, uh, going for a drive, a walk, sitting and having food together, but actually like talking to each other, that sort of thing. Difficult when you're very busy, but yeah, you try your best. 
uh, what car do you drive and are you looking to upgrade soon? So yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big car nerd. I drive a, and I'll put a picture of this on because yeah, I drive a, a GTI, it's 2018, so I've got the digital dash, it's blue. I've had a, the resonator deleted, I've got a stage one tuned on it. I love my car, sounds fucking amazing, like 310 brake right now, so pretty fast. Um, I've always been into cars, automatic as well, so it's fast as fuck. Do I want to upgrade? I'd love to, but I'm not going to because I'm, I don't want to be silly. I could I could get a new car, but it wouldn't be financially sensible for me to do that. I'd rather move abroad before I do that. But what car would I get? As I mentioned before, it's between quite a few cars. M4, the, the new G80 M4 competition with a wing has to have a spoiler, otherwise it looks unbalanced as a car. The a C63S, I love those, but... Uh, I would only go for C class if it was the, uh, the the V8, because I think the C class are quite small cars. That's why I prefer the M4. I also love the E class. I think the E class is actually a nicer silhouette of a car, but it's uh, you can't get the E63, and the E53 is hard to come by. I also love an RS5, but they don't look aggressive enough. If I'm going to spend that much money on a car, I want everybody to know that it's a performance car. Same with the M2. I love the exterior of an M2, but the interior is fucking wank. The new ones, I don't really like them that much. I do like some Jeeps as well, so like I don't mind like a GLC 63S and X5M. Um, I like saloon cars. I would love an M5, an M3, even an M3 Touring. I don't mind those cars, but yeah, I'm... I, I'll not be upgrading for at least a year because my car's like it's in it's not that high mileage. It's in good nick. It's twenty eighteen, so it's not it's not really an old car, and it's fun. How to invite your way back to her place with the intention of sleeping with her? So you always do this indirectly. You never directly say to a girl, "Can we have sex? Let's go walk to your house or my house and have sex." You never do that. Even if she says to you on the day, "I'm gonna fuck you," you you don't then go, "Yeah, I'm gonna fuck you as well." I guarantee it'll put her off, mate. Fucking guaranteed. What you, you do instead is indirectly invite yourself back or invite her back for a certain purpose. You, you give it a reason. You say to her, uh, I'm going to give you a house tour. If you're lucky, if you're a good girl, I'll give you a house tour. If, if I, when I beat you at pool, when I beat you at pool, not if, when, I'll give you a tour of my house. Uh, b let's say she beats you at pool, whatever activity you've done. Because you've beat me, we're going to have to have a rematch via a pillow fight in my house. Do you see how I'm just creating fake scenarios where I can invite her back without being weird? In this case where I said, how can I invite my way back to her place? Say, I'm assuming she's like a student or something, or let's say she just has her own place. Uh, you can say, because you're a red flag or a psychopath, I'll have to confirm that via a house tour. Or you can invite me back to your place for a drink. You can't be that forward. And, and that way, she can politely decline without you being fully rejected. So yeah, that's always the easiest, easiest way to do it. Uh, what else we got? Let's just text it. Let's see if I... Uh, I'll see if I've had any more questions on Instagram, and if not, we'll, we'll leave that there. Half an hour is a pretty good time. Didn't want to make it too long. Uh, hello. Video uploaded. Let's have a look. Any more questions, boys? No, 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 no. Yeah, so I think we'll leave that there. That was a that was a good Q and A. I'm starting to fucking crash now as well. The paracetamol's wearing off, and I've got a call soon anyway. So yeah, thanks for watching, boys. As always, go and watch my other videos if you want to work with me one to one personally, get guided through your dating life. That's it's also self improvement. Some some of my clients refer to me as a life coach because I suppose I am. And if you want to learn how to find her, attract her, keep her texting game, dating app profiles, everything, fitness, then yeah, you can book a free consultation below and you can apply to work, work with me one-to-one. -one. There is only limited slots, of course. So yeah, first come, first served. So until the next video, bye-bye.